Over the past few years, there have been a number of studies suggesting that it is possible to outperform the stock market by selecting stocks using certain criteria. In this video, we will review some of these studies and discuss how you can use their findings to improve your investment returns and potentially beat the market. One of the most famous studies on stock selection was conducted by two professors from Stanford University, Joseph Piotrowski and William O'Neill. In their paper, they looked at the historical financial statement information of public companies and found that stocks with high returns had certain characteristics. In general, these stocks had a higher return on assets than the market average, had a higher earnings per share growth rate than the market average, were selling at a lower price to book value ratio than the market average. Based on these findings, the professors created a stock selection screen that became known as the Piotrowski F score. The Piotrowski F score is a nine point scale that assigns a score of zero to nine, with nine being the highest score. To receive a high score, a stock must have strong financial statement fundamentals. The specific criteria are as follows. Return on assets, one point if it is positive in the current year, zero otherwise. Operating cash flow, one point if it is positive in the current year. Change in return of assets, one point if ROA is higher in the current year compared to the previous one. Accruals, one point if operating cash flow divided by total assets is higher than return on assets in the current year. Change in leverage ratio, one point if the ratio is lower this year compared to the previous one. Change in current ratio, one point if it is higher in the current year compared to the previous one. Change in the number of shares, one point if no new shares were issued during the last year. Change in gross margin, one point if it is higher in the current year compared to the previous one. Change in asset turnover ratio, one point if it is higher in the current year compared to the previous one. A company must pass all nine tests to receive the maximum score of nine points. However, even if it only passes eight of the nine tests, it will still be ranked higher than companies with lower scores. A company score can range from a minimum of zero points if it fails all nine tests to a maximum of nine points. The more points a company has, the better. The Value Investing Approach the value investing approach is a very popular investment strategy that has been used by many successful investors over the years. The basic premise of value investing is to buy stocks that are trading at a discount to their intrinsic value. There are many different ways to calculate the intrinsic value of a stock, but one of the most popular methods is to use a discounted cash flow analysis. A DCF analysis estimates the future cash flows of a company and then discounts them back to today's dollars using a discount rate. The result is an estimate of the intrinsic value of the company stock. If you believe that a company stock is trading below its intrinsic value, then it may be worth considering as an investment opportunity. One thing to keep in mind when using this approach is that you need to have realistic assumptions about future growth rates and discount rates in order for your valuation models to be accurate. Over or underestimating either one can lead you astray when making investment decisions. Warren Buffett is often cited as the most successful value investor of all time. His investing strategy is based on finding companies with a wide margin of safety between their current stock price and their intrinsic value. One of the most important concepts in the Intelligent Investor book and in value investing, in general, is the margin of safety, which is the difference between the intrinsic value of a company and its current market price. The idea behind the margin of safety is that it allows investors to buy stocks at a discount, which reduces the risk of losing money if the stock doesn't perform as expected. For example, let's say you find a company that you believe is worth $100 million, but it's currently trading at $50 million. This would give you a margin of safety of 50%, which means that even if the stock only goes up to $75 million, you would still make a profit. Of course, the higher the margin of safety, the better. In this example, a 50% margin of safety is pretty good, but if you could find a company with a 70% or 80% margin of safety, that would be even better. To make this even more clear, let's say you are building a bridge. You know that this bridge has the room to hold onto a maximum of 100 cars. Would you build it to hold 100 cars or more? Of course, you would aim for this bridge to hold onto much more because of the margin of safety. So even if 100 cars come, there is a lower chance that the bridge will break since it was built for more than that. The same goes for stocks, if a company is trading at $50 million but is worth $100 million, then it has a margin of safety or buffer, so that even if the company fails to meet exceptions, you won't lose much. 
This is why it's important to focus on companies with a high margin of safety when you're looking for stocks to buy. By doing this, you'll be protected from losses if the stock doesn't perform as expected. If you're interested in learning more about value investing, there are a number of great resources available online and in print. One book that I would recommend is The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. I will leave the link for this book in the description down below, you should check it out. The Magic Formula Now that we know what the margin of safety is and why it's important, let's look at a simple formula that you can use to find stocks with a high margin of safety. This formula is often called the Magic Formula and was popularized by Joel Greenblatt in his book The Little Book That Beats the Market. Here's how the Magic Formula works. First, set a minimum market capitalization for your portfolio companies. This should be typically higher than $100 million. Ensure you exclude any financial or utility stocks when you choose your companies. Exclude American depository receipts. These are stocks in foreign companies. Calculate each company's earnings yield. Calculate each company's return on capital. Rank selected companies by highest earnings yields and highest return on capital. Buy two to three positions each month in the top 20 to 30 companies over the course of a year. Each year, rebalance the portfolio by selling off losers one week before the year term ends. Sell off winners one week after the year mark for tax purposes. Repeat the process each year for a minimum of five to 10 years or more. While this formula is simple, it's important to remember that it's not perfect. Just because a stock passes all of the screens doesn't mean that it's guaranteed to be a winner. Nevertheless, the magic formula is still a valuable tool for finding stocks with a high margin of safety. But does it actually work? A magic formula sounds like a scam to me. Well, a backtest of market performance between 2003 and 2015 found that the magic formula strategy had annualized returns of 11.4% compared with 8.7% from the S&P 500. So indeed, this strategy has proven itself. You can also use the magic formula screening just as a first layer screener and pick your favorite stocks from that list. The magic formula screener is available for free at magicformulainvesting.com. If you're interested in learning more about the magic formula, I recommend reading Joel Greenblatt's book The Little Book That Beats the Market. The Peter Lynch Approach Another well-known and successful value investing strategy is the Peter Lynch Approach. Peter Lynch is a legendary investor who ran the Magellan Fund at Fidelity Investments between 1977 and 1990. During that time, the fund generated annualized returns of 29.2%. In his book, One Up on Wall Street, Lynch outlines his approach to investing. Lynch believes that the key to successful investing is to find companies that are growing faster than the overall market, but are still undervalued by the market. To find these companies, Lynch recommends looking for businesses that you understand and that you would be happy owning even if the stock price never went up. He also looks for companies with a high return on equity and a low price to earnings ratio. Lynch's approach is a great example of how successful value investors think. Instead of blindly following a set of rules, they look for companies that are undervalued by the market and have strong fundamentals. This is the best way to find hidden gems in the stock market that can generate above average returns. In One Up One Wall Street, Lynch outlines six different types of stocks he looks for. The slow growers. Large and aging companies expected to grow only slightly faster than the US economy as a whole, but often paying large regular dividends. These are not among his favorites. The stalwarts. Large companies that are still able to grow, with annual earnings growth rates of around 10% to 12%, examples include Coca-Cola, Procter and Gamble, and Bristol-Myers. If purchased at a good price, Lynch says he expects good but not enormous returns certainly no more than 50% in two years and possibly less. Lynch suggests rotating among the companies, selling when moderate gains are reached, and repeating the process with others that haven't yet appreciated. These firms also offer downside protection during recessions. Fast Growers Small, aggressive new firms with annual earnings growth of 20% to 25% a year. These do not have to be in fast-growing industries and in fact Lynch prefers those that are not. Fast growers are among Lynch's favorites and he says that an investor's biggest gains will come from this type of stock. However, they also carry considerable risk. The cyclicals. 
Companies in which sales and profits tend to rise and fall in somewhat predictable patterns based on the economic cycle, examples include companies in the auto industry, airlines and steel. Lynch warns that these firms can be mistaken for stalwarts by inexperienced investors, but share prices of cyclicals can drop dramatically during hard times. Thus, timing is crucial when investing in these firms, and Lynch says that investors must learn to detect the early signs that business is starting to turn down. The turnarounds. Companies that have been battered down or depressed. Lynch calls these no-growers, his examples include Chrysler, Penn Central and General Public Utilities, owner of Three Mile Island. The stocks of successful turnarounds can move back up quickly, and Lynch points out that of all the categories, these upturns are least related to the general market. Asset opportunities. Companies that have assets that Wall Street analysts and others haven't discovered yet. Lynch points to several general areas where asset plays can often be found, metals and oil, newspapers and TV stations, and patented drugs. However, finding these hidden assets requires a real working knowledge of the company that owns the assets, and Lynch points out that within this category, the local edge, your own knowledge and experience, can be used to the greatest advantage. Lynch believes the average guy has an advantage over Wall Street because they can use their local knowledge to see things that the analysts would miss. He gives examples of how to find these companies and how they have worked in the past. Asset plays are a great way to make money in the market, but you need to have a deep understanding of the company in order to find them. Finally, Lynch shares some tips for investors in order to get above average returns and beat the market. Look for companies that have a competitive advantage. This could be in the form of a unique product, low costs, or a loyal customer base. Avoid investing in companies with high debt levels and avoid leveraged buyouts. Be patient and wait for the right opportunities to come along, don't just invest because you think the market is going up or down in general. Stick to your plan and don't let emotions get in the way of your investment decisions. Review your portfolio regularly and make sure you are still comfortable with the risks you are taking. Conclusion When it comes to the stock market, there are many investing approaches, in this video, we walked through four of them. Well three actually the Piotrowski F-score, the value investing approach, and the magic formula. You can choose your favorite one or even combine them. If you find a company that is suitable for two or more of the investment strategies presented in this video, you likely found a winner. Please keep in mind that the stock market is risky and you can lose all your money, so invest wisely. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. Adios.